Hi everyone, thank you for joining us on Adobe Live. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our new Adobe Live channel on YouTube to stay up to date on the latest streams, participate in the Adobe Live community, and so much more. Uh, this week in honor of Black History Month, Adobe Live is featuring a lineup of Black creatives that will showcase their workflows, creativity, and during all during live stream. Uh, and you know, with that being said, let's kick it off to Kieran, a great artist and an even better friend. Tell us more about yourself, oh, Kieran. Do you want intro? I love that. <laughs> nice to <laughs> Nice to meet you all, uh, or e-meet you all. My name is Kieran Lewis. I'm a freelance graphic designer based in London. You probably couldn't tell from the accent. And yeah, I'm super excited to uh, to show you guys what I can do and to share some stuff in InDesign and stuff you might know already or stuff that you might be new to you guys. So uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be here, but on the designing side rather than the hosting side, which is cool. Yeah, yeah, switching it up. I know like uh, a couple of months ago, we got to kind of have the roles reverse and it was really, really fun. And, you know, for even a better reason now, like with Black History Month, getting to highlight Black creators and people mm -hmm. that we love, I think is just like the coolest thing ever. Uh, and it looks like you kind of have some examples of your work up now, right? Do you want to kind of jump into that? Yeah, sure, do? of course. Nice. So I uh, hope you guys can see my website. Um, so a bit about what I do, mainly editorial design. That's pretty much um, what I get up for in the mornings. Um, what you can see is a few examples of work I've done over the years. Um, if you go back, I mean, I started freelancing two years ago. Wow. Um, and actually the first project, I mean, a lot's happened. It's, it's been obviously lockdown and whatnot and um, different clients, but the first project kind of, which I'll show you, which kind of links into today's brief a little bit, um, is very much touching on the black community. Um, editorial design is like I said, is my thing. I mean, this is an example of a, of a project um, in collaboration with HarperCollins, uh, which I worked with, um, I'm working quite often. So you guys can have you see a few examples of different designs and spreads, editorial layouts, which is pretty much, what I like to do an experiment with. Um, yeah. And that's kind of what we'll be doing today as well. So, yeah. I mean, the colors you choose to are like incredible. Like I've noticed when it comes to, especially like book and art editorial design, you tend to like see swaying one way or another, but I feel like, you mm. know, you definitely highlight it's bold, you know what I mean? And that's like my uh, favorite yeah. thing in art too. <laughs> and you got, and you need it to kind of like, for me, color is so important. I think it's one of those ones where maybe we're creators, but I, I I don't work well with a lot of tech, which the irony is there's a lot of text on the screen, as you can see, but right, I right. tend to work well with like big typography, colors, shapes, which is kind of what I want to link in um, with the project I'm working on today as well. Um, but yeah, just to give you a bit of an idea of what I do, this is pretty much that in a nutshell, editorial design. Yeah, is my, it looks my like uh, Paloma in chat too is saying, ooh, those pages. I think a lot of people are agreeing. They love the presentation of the work. Winsome's saying they love it too. But it looks like we have some nice. social pages too, right? From what I'm seeing. Indeed you do, yeah. So, nice. uh, I mean, my my Insta, I'm pretty active on the Insta front. Um, you can kind of see a few, because um, I actually do a parallel to um, my freelance design work. I also right. do talks at schools and universities. Um, oh, awesome. So, which is really cool because again, it's it's a chance to kind of go back and speak to the younger generation um, and share experiences, um, but also try and get them thinking how they could, you know, think that graphic design is actually a, a realistic job. Because I don't know about Absolutely. you, but growing up, it maybe didn't feel like it. It could be a you know a job, or one that could at least sustain you in terms of how you need to work financially and and whatnot. Um, Absolutely, so yeah. I think I mean you you hit it like right on the nail, like the nail on the head too. Like when I think of uh, you know supporting youth and with the stuff that we're wanting to do especially mm. maybe disadvantaged people i think it's really leaning into trying to empower people and show that like yeah you can do what you want you can have fun and you know you can make a career out of that it's like so so important you know so true. and i think you made a hit but i mean a good point i mean if you um not only use the word target but if you really focus on on the younger generation then it allows mm -hmm. them to kind of grow up thinking that you know it's much more achievable um and you'll probably notice as well one of the thumbnails, which is hey Jacob. Yeah. It wasn't long ago that uh, oh, I'm mean, a bit orange. That's weird. But it wasn't long ago <laughs> that I was, I was hosting you. So um, it's kind of nice that we've kind of gone back round and now you're hosting me. So uh, oh yeah, yeah, full circle. Yeah, I mean, I think this would be a great segue to kind of you know work and uh, see what we're working on today too, right? Like, do you want to hop into that? Like a plan, right? So I've got it all strategically up for you guys on the screen. Oh no, not that one. Uh, there we go. This is live, guys. There's mistakes that have popped up every now and again. <laughs> Um, so yeah, what I want to start by saying is first of all, what I'm actually working on. Um, so editorial design, like I mentioned, is, is my thing. Um, and over the years I've had the opportunity to work, um, and be friends with a lot of amazingly talented black creatives. And I wanted to create, um, a, a print editorial, um, uh, design where it kind of showcases and pays homage to four, um, black creatives in particular who have either direct linkage with myself or we've worked together over the years or, you know, we're friends. 
Um, so I want to start by introducing, um, so these are four people who will be featured in the spreads we're working on today. Um, I'm going to give you guys a brief intro into all four of the amazing, talented individuals. So the first we can see on screen um, is a good friend of mine. In fact, we went to school together. So we're going back, um, we're going back some years. <laughs> I won't tell you how long because I won't give you my age. Um, but yeah, we've got Sharika, who's a singer and songwriter. Um, and I'll give you a bit of an intro just to kind of um, start off with Sharika. Um, so through songwriting, Sharika vows to encourage conversations that makes us vulnerable. Uh, from charming one-liners to heartfelt confessions, Sharika celebrates the complexity of self-discovery um, by continuously warming the hearts of listeners. Sharika has previously opened for Seal, uh, who's an awesome musician, if you guys might know who that is. Um, and the music, yeah. And I just realized, I think I'm the only one on, on the Zoom. So, so uh, we're back in two minutes, guys. So yeah, this is live. <laughs> back in a sec. All right, welcome back. Sorry about those technical difficulties. I guess we can just hop right back into it, you know? Sure. No, it's the beauty of, I mean, beauty is it's live, right? So there's, these things right. always happen, man, but we're good for it, we're good for it. Um, so hopefully my friends, you might've seen uh, the last little bit I was saying about um, Sharika with the visual you can see on screen. 
Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So we've got all these awesome assets that I'm going to be using um, in the editorial spread. Um, a second person who I'm going to be uh, featured in this uh, editorial spread is Obadi, um, who actually is someone who we had on Adobe Live not long ago. Oh, nice. Um, and, which is also it's kind of like a 360. Um, and we just stayed in touch on, on social media. And I said to him, you know, one day we called cool to work on something together. And um, I reached out and he was super keen to, to get involved. So um, some of you might have seen his streams before, but he's mm. an insanely talented uh, photographer. Um, and his intro, which I'll give it to you guys, is um, so Obadi is a Nigerian photographer based in LA, California. Uh, he specializes in fashion um, and commercial digital photography, creative direction and storytelling. As a visual storyteller, he uses different influences and aspects of his life to create an image that resonates with the viewer. His work is best described as outworld, otherworldly, yet simple and grounded, inclusive and warm hint of nostalgia. Um, so yeah, you guys can probably I mean, the vibes of this work is absolutely beautiful. Oh um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. You can definitely tell with the colors and just like the overall kind of like, it feels real but not in a sense like mm. it feels like like i mean i think it was described perfectly like otherworldly like just it's looking like a movie you know like a still movie yeah. image right it's incredible, he, incredible he's sharp incredible with it work. and he's a very very awesome like genuine guy as well which i mean that that would balance it out as well with the skill set so um so yeah Obadi is another person who's going to be featured in the spreads um the third person um, which again, it's all good. Each one featured has got a direct link of some sort with myself. Um, so mm. Danny was actually one of my first clients that I worked with as a freelancer. And wow. I only use the word client because we're really good friends as well now, which right, is awesome. Right. Um, and so yeah, Danny's little introduction um, is, <clears throat> excuse me, croaky voice. So Danny is an international actress, commissioned a playwright and professional voice over artist who has been in the industry for over 13 years. <clears throat> Her TV Incredible. credits include... EastEnders, Doctors, Dreaming Whilst Black, Everything I Know About Love. Um, and she has also performed in theatres over um, all over the UK. Some of you guys might even recognise this gentleman. Played a certain character yeah. in Harry Potter. Just yeah. saying, just saying. Uh, and <laughs> in, uh, in that, the Menu movie, right? In that new movie, The Menu. He was the chef. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I love that you know that. <laughs> yeah, Ralph, Ralph Fiend. A lot of, looks like a lot of people are into it too. And uh, yeah, yeah, and looking for Paloma in the <laughs> chat too, they're saying that they're really enjoying all the artists that you chose. They love nice. the people you selected. I mean, I think you have a great bunch too. And like from nice. all different fields from what it seems like too, right? That's exactly what I wanted to do. I thought rather than, and I've, I've kind of concluded the last person I got featured, but rather than everyone just being, say, a graphic designer or illustrator or photographer, mm -hmm. it was the idea, because two things, one, we're paying homage to black creatives in, you know, in the world basically as a whole, but mm -hmm. also in different sectors within work as a whole, because obviously not everyone who views or comes into our chats our streams is necessarily a designer. So I thought it'd right. be quite nice to show people, you know, if they're an acting or for example, the last person very much, you know, they are a designer, but they also work within, um, you know, strategy as well. So on that note, I'll kind of conclude with the last person who I've got featured. Um, so Louisa is a lovely, lovely, um, lovely, lovely person who works um, and is co-founder of a platform called Kundu Kids. So mm -hmm. Kundu Kids to, to let you know what that is um it's basically um a platform which allows young children to have a bit of understanding um, of what the continent africa is and what comes out of it um they recently launched a really cool book which you guys can see in the center so cool called a is for africa and it's an incredible book teaching um children and adults really about the continent and what can come out of it um and as well as doing um you know these books they also do workshops as well to help children which has been kind of picked up over the past few years they've been going on um and louise and i we actually know each other because we work together on a side community-based project um going back a few years back and again we've all stayed in touch um, yeah so i mean awesome. it's incredible like i think especially work like this is just so important and so cool because you know i know at least for me younger like connecting with my roots was always something that was a little hard especially living mm. for me in the united states for you it'd be somewhere different <laughs> but you know the things like this make that so much more accessible being able to learn about it from such a young age and it be approachable sure. <clears throat> and say these are the decisions we've made so like again sure. i think a great person to choose absolutely no i mean everyone featured is i mean the assets are great as well and i think it's it's one of those ones where hopefully some of them are actually viewing today but right. you know we can do some really nice editorial spreads and it's not necessarily we're going to make a book as such which is kind of what i do for a living but it's more to show you guys with the assets that i'm working with um different ways we can use editorial design we can play with typography 
and I've also a bit of color. And if we have time at the end, time willing, because things go mm. super fast in the dairy space, I'll do some uh, nice little mock-ups as well to kind of showcase. So, um, so yeah, should we just jump straight into yeah, exactly what we're doing? Yeah, I think so. Doing? I think we're going to be Wicked. learning some really cool stuff today. <laughs> awesome. Let's go for it. Well, I'll be teaching myself as I go along. I always think oh, yeah. I have ideas of how things would go. And then eventually, who knows, it could just go all different ways of life. But um, Oh, so see. this is like your workflow from what it looks like. You start with sketches. Yeah, exactly. So what I wanted to do is to um, to not want to do a, a live stream of me drawing. I'll probably bore you all. Um, so what I've done is I've, I tend to do for every job I do really is um, a quick scamp. My friends, we'll be back again in a few minutes. We do apologize. Back in a sec. back again so yeah let's hop right back into it sure we're keeping you guys on your toes to make sure you keep on staying with us so just hope you have last time um right right yeah just to kind of jump in what you guys can see on screen um before i do any design work i have to um i've got to draw i've got to do some scams um i mean over a few years even freelancing but in full time i've kind of and i think most editorial designers come to like work in it you you kind of work within a grid uh, right. Well, you do work in the grocery store, not kind of. Um, so your brain kind of operates when you design of how things could work, how type should be editorial. So what you guys can see on the screen is obviously a few variants of different spreads. Um, I mean, I don't expect you to read my hieroglyphics, i.e. my handwriting, because it's a bit <laughs> crazy. Um, but the idea is just, you know, for myself to know where things might sit. For example, Danny, the actress we spoke about. Um, right. I'm sorry, Danny, this is not an image of you. It's quickly <laughs> rough. Don't quote me on it. Um, but yeah, it's just how fiends could sit. And I kind of like the idea of um, there's a lot of imagery that she's got, which is quite slender, if that right. makes sense. So I thought it'd be quite nice to do like a panel, which again, I'll design that probably went on first, um, of how that could work. Um, or for example, the Kundu Kids, where there's examples of the new book they released. So maybe a nice little mock-up, which could sit and then text and so forth. Um, but also, like I mentioned in some of my um, previous work, I like to work with type quite big. So mm -hmm. there's a few examples where we might, you know, elongate or go quite big on certain words or for example of Sharika maybe have things overlapping but that's all me talking we should perhaps start going straight into it and designing um let's yeah. see how good this guy is actually does that design it? so <laughs> let's so go when, for it when it comes to your design process too you know once mm. while we're hopping into this do you feel like you find yourself uh falling into kind of sticking with what you sketch out and sticking what you had in mind initially or do you tend to take multiple routes what do you what do you find yourself doing uh that's a good question i am um, i would like to say i kind of go there with an idea of like oh okay i know what i'm working with but how my brain operates and it has been probably since as a, as a kid is mm -hmm. that i will switch it up even midway through designing sometimes mm -hmm. which i'm not even trying to say that's a good thing because i think sometimes right. it's nice to be precise but right, it's right. kind of one where i'm designing and then halfway through i might have to um uh duplicate a spread and then start designing something else and then come back to that one previously later mm -hmm. just because my mind's got that mindset of i i have an idea of something and i need to just get it down if that makes right. sense. right that makes um, total sense uh let us know in the chat if anyone else has that moment because i feel like i'm yeah not the only one surely that has oh yeah that. <laughs> absolutely i think everyone works on a different flow and you know it's mm -hmm. interesting because you know when you're putting stuff down on a sketch page and then when you actually hop into your program of choice for this case it's InDesign for you but for me like illustrator it tends mm. to be one of those things that it never really kind of 
fully flows exactly what you expect it to be. It could go better, it could go worse, or, you know, a here or there, right? For sure. But Looks like um, we have Stuart in the chat saying that he uh, works the same way. Nice. We're not the only one. Yeah. We're not alone. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, let's start getting some assets onto the uh, onto the page. Absolutely. You can see how how tidy I actually tend to work as well. <laughs> Got a folder <laughs> dedicated to Adobe Live. So I was uh, about to say, yeah, you're very organized. Uh, do you feel like you started off being this organized when it came to your work, or was it more of a you know over time you learned and kind of grew with that? Um, I think it was over time. I think, I mean, where I worked at, I've had opportunity to work at quite a few, um, uh, different agencies. And over the years, I've kind of picked up different traits, um, of how to design and even mm. more so like how to be organized as well. Um, so yeah, I think it's a case of that really, like being able to kind of, kind of go back into my mind of what it was like to be a junior designer and be quite. I was quite messy back in the day how I think I would let it work. I'm not going to lie about that. Um, and then after a while, yeah, I just kind of uh, refined myself, I think, and got better with it. Yeah, I think that's kind of like, you know, what happens with any craft specifically is you become more refined or even outside of refining yourself, you find more of like your footing and your ground, if that makes sense, like kind of mm. figuring out what works best for you. And it's looking like in the chat too, a lot of people are saying their workflows tend to kind of vary like we have... Um, Val saying that they feel like their sketches help them start, but they often often deviate from them. We have Sin Definitely. saying sketches are a must, have to do. And then um see it. Alessandra saying, uh, always sketch first, Kieran, and then go to the digital process. So or they always sketch <laughs> sure. first. So Yeah, I, I can relate to that totally. Um and actually I, I realized I just jumped a gun. I didn't even actually explain. So first things first, what we're working with. Um right. so I've got a little color wheel which is being a little bit weird. Hopefully it will go in a minute. Um, so I'm working with a, I can show you directly, this document set up. Um, so we're working on an A5. And remember, this is not going to print. This is very much just to show you guys some spreads. Um, right. But by default, my brain has to work with bleeds because I'm just so used to working with bleeds, which is basically the, the, the corner edges of the print. So when they cut, they know where to cut from. Um, so it's an A5 um, document that I'm working with. And in terms of my sort of columns, I've got a uh, two column grid, which you guys can see here, you've got two columns. And then mm -hmm. this bit in the middle is the gutter. So that's where um, you've got a bit of spacing in between where the text will sit. Um, and I tend to work within the grids, but then there's moments where I might, and probably will most likely go off a bit um, with the design. But, um, but yeah, what I'm gonna do is, oh, and also font wise, I mean, it's always a tricky one with what kind of fonts I like to work within. Um, I mean, at the moment that I like Brandon Grotesque and Baskerville, right. which are kind of, I don't know, they're, they're, they're safe. I mean, you can say they're yeah. kind of safe, but I, yeah. I tend to use them because I like them a lot. Um, I think we all have our yeah. safe fonts, right? We all have the one exactly. font that we always come back to and it, it just works and it's great, right? Exactly. Do you have like a favorite font that you that you like? or? Oh, man. Yeah. So I found this one back in the... Uh, not too long ago called Dottie's Vanilla. And I think it was an open source <laughs> font. And it's just, I use that for yeah. almost everything. I love it so much. It's the Dottie's best. Vanilla. That's, oh, yeah. where do they get these names from? I, I love these names. It, yeah, they're name. pretty creative, right? From what I'm thinking. <laughs> That's hilarious. But, but yeah, I mean, looking at the, the flow of InDesign, I think it's really cool that you're able to just kind of digitize a page. Because from what I'm understanding, this would be the inside of our first editorial page. Right. Exactly that. So, I mean, I'm pretty much doing it quite of a, how can I explain? Um, there's different ways of how you would go, obviously, designing an editorial spread. And a lot of the work I've done is, is mainly being bigger publications, for example. But in this right. case, I'm just kind of just playing around with different spreads. So we wouldn't even work on a cover today. It's more showing you the different editorial spreads. And yeah, this is necessarily probably the first one that you would get. Um, mm. And I'm what I'm trying to do is, which hopefully you guys can see, I want to go a bit smaller on her. Um, I'm going to work this thumbnail in fact why do that i'll just close it up so you guys can save it easily um i'm going to work on a spread because one thing that's quite nice is danny's name it's 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 um an even number right it's four, four right. characters four letters so i thought it'd be quite nice to kind of split up but still you're able to read so i want to have an image of danny in the center well kind of center and then the word danny and then um so there's no body copy we're using we're using our good friend lauren epson um for dummy copy Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's just to get an idea of how text would sit um, with imagery. Yeah, I think, I mean, 
looking at that flow and kind of already having that idea is is awesome because I know when I'm flipping through pages or flipping through design or any any book, I think the the readability is huge, right? Like I think mm. kind of leaning into that can always be a bit daunting. I think when it comes to illustrate the illustration side of things, um, my favorite part is drawing. My least favorite part is organizing it personally, but that might be different for you. I love you that. Know? Yeah, no, for sure. I would love to know in the chat what everyone's because ever, everyone's got a different way of operating, right? And, and working. Right. And it's, um, I don't know, like I found, I don't know if it's the same for you, Jacob, but like even during like lockdown, like I learned a lot about myself, about how I work and how fast I can work as well. Because I mean, that's the thing over the years, you kind of, the more projects you do, the more you realize how quick you are or, um, or what challenges you might face over the years, you know? Right. Um, absolutely. You kind of get that flow, get that idea going. And yeah, let us know in the chat. How does your workflow look like? What does your process for designing look like? And how has that mm. changed over time, especially because that's just how it is. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, I love these. All right, do you think these background colors are what you're going to be sticking with for this? Or is this yeah, kind of like a I, working um... space? It's weird because I actually, my brain was like, I don't want to just put just a black image, a black, uh, solid black on it, which I can, but I think it was more, I'm going to pick out, um, I usually use the eye drop tool and then mm -hmm. pick out colors with from in the imagery. Mm -hmm. um, and this might not be the image I use. It might be, there's another image of her that's quite slender um, in terms of the, the kind of ratio of the image. So I think I could use that. But for now, I'm, I'm kind of liking this brown, um, which kind of relates, you know, to skin complexion, but also the background of the wood as well. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I think it pops really well. And with the white too, it just makes the image, or I should say the page itself, look very like contrasted, I guess would be a good word. A nice little mm. nickel and dime word. It looks like um, Isabella in the chat is saying that they're happy to see us uh, together again, which is awesome. Yeah. It's cool to see some returning people. It's good to see you guys. Well, I actually, I actually can't, because I usually have my... Um... I have my uh, chat up on the screen from the hearts, but I can't see yeah. anything. So you're right. my eyes and ears today, Jacob. I, I assume people are here watching <laughs> us, but I, I like to think they are. Absolutely. I don't know. <laughs> it looks like we got a a good comment on workflow as well, too, from uh, Alessandra saying that uh, they create visual mood boards to help with their color palette. Do you find mm. yourself ever doing visual mood boards? I'd say for me personally, not as much as uh when i first started it kind of mm. just comes from vomiting out on the page but what about you i feel like with this it might be completely <laughs> well, different right um yeah i i it, there's always different ways and i think as well it depends on the nature of the project or brief so i mean timing is something that we don't we all don't have and i always find that um if it's a project say i need to work quite quickly um there's still i'll always still do my drawings like my scamps that's something that i would regardless of how long i have i just have to do drawings before i design design Right. Um, but if it's a project that's quite a lengthy project, like the still breathing one I showed you on my website, which is a hardback, free, you know, three month project, mm -hmm. um, you know, I might go out and do some research. I might visit a few galleries, exhibitions, um, and really get a feel for um, for different ways of how it could work. Um, yeah, yeah. kind of getting like that workflow general idea down and uh, yeah. seeing other examples of it kind of like in real life exactly that exactly that that's awesome um and by the way what i tend to do is as well which you guys are probably noticed what i'm doing i do like a drop cap which i i don't know it's weird like i started <laughs> doing this a lot and i think maybe my lecturers if they saw me at uni thinking what is he doing um but i always think it's quite elegant when you add like a drop cap um obviously it depends on the nature of the spread and how you're operating um right but yeah i always think that's quite a nice um way to kind of bring things out and a nice starting point before you get into it um, yeah absolutely i think kind of seeing that side by side and for for some of the viewers that might not know uh if you could like explain like just drop cap what would that look of like course yeah of course i can um so what it would be basically what you can see here is that um you've got all your lauren lauren epsom dummy copy um and there is a tool up on let me just highlight that uh where you can see at the moment that's number one but if you mm -hmm. go up you can see it kind of changes length and size, but it still starts at the very beginning. And you get these in a lot of, maybe what the technical term would be, but like very old fashioned books sometimes. Um, well, I'm thinking about the Bible. <laughs> That's just so random. Yeah. Though, you know, very yeah. old kind of scroll like, um, you know, take it to Mordor kind of style vibes. But, right, right. but yeah, um, 
but then I always think because there's not much copy here, it, it gets a bit silly if you start making it too big. So, I mean, even free feels a bit big. So, you know, actually a free could be okay. Um, but I would kind of work it like this, I think, as a design. Um, and then, yeah, I'm just kind of doing just roughly as we yeah, go Yeah, kind of but, getting um, that, that general idea down. It's looking like we have a question from Stuart directly to you, actually, Karen. Uh, yeah, and sure. they're asking, uh, do you color grade your images depending on the book style? Do I cut Sorry, could you repeat that, please? Uh, they asked, do you color grade your images depending on the book style? So maybe the images that you drop into the uh, the editorials themselves, do you feel like you mm. tend to lean the photography a specific color temperature? Uh, like that? That's, a good, that's a good point, actually. Um, it does depend. I mean, actually, what you can see now, this is probably a good example to do it now. I'm going to work with, because obviously all those assets I showed you, they all they all range. Some of them range in quality. Right. Um, but the one person which probably stands out and it would do because of the nature of the job is the photographer, Obadi. Right, um, right, right. Super high res. I'm going to jump in with, um, don't worry, I haven't forgotten Danny's spread. I'm going to come back to that. But I had ideas <laughs> right now whilst I'm designing for this. And I think it's, with these kind of pictures, for example, there's a lot of, muted colors and i i almost feel like i need to kind of pick out key colors within that mm -hmm. um and more so that your eyes can kind of be drawn towards it um i want to do a version whereby it takes up say a quarter of the page actually and then that way it leaves me this last panel on the right for text mm -hmm. to come through um let's see what other imagery he has he has some beautiful imagery it's it's with. really some stuff like i haven't seen before you know coming from like a completely different frame of view it's the i love the reds in it and the dark dark like ebony colors that they chose as well it's just like you know looks awesome it is beautiful there's only one downside sometimes to the really high quality imagery and i, I know people i'm sure will relate to this oh, it's yeah. um how slow sometimes it can it can move so right now we're in <laughs> the view that we're looking at display performance is typical mm -hmm. um but yeah high quality we just i wouldn't want to make you guys get be crashed because of the result of what you're watching because of how long it would take oh, um yeah. but yeah that that can happen quite often um so yeah Absolutely. I, because I'm, I'm still using in these grids format um and we're kind of working in that space and you can see as well um with the baseline grid it's it's in a position where um it's not going to tamper with the page number even though mm. we're not going to print and, and whatnot um, but if this was going to print, then obviously I, I would pick out, um, I would make sure that the spacing is correct. Um, I mean, I put a bleed in there, even though it's not going to print, but it's just a default. Right. And just, you know, working with mm. the, the knowledge that you have, which actually kind of, you know, brings me to a question that I'd have for you as well. Yeah, hit me. Because I know you do, at least from what I understand, digital and uh, physical editorials. You know, you have mm. some stuff that get posted up online. Do you feel yourself kind of changing necessarily your workflow or your direction when it comes to both of those uh, forms of media? Like when you say you approach a project differently if it's physical than it would be if it's digital? That's a very good question. Um, yeah, I think you would have to. I think as well, depending on the audience who you're getting into engage with it. So for example, mm -hmm. if we're focusing on, you know, a particular generation or, or age or something like that it's how they would actually integrate uh, interact with whatever it is whether it's something tangible like a printed book or whether it's a digital device you know app i mean that's quite important but also as well um attention span as well of people i mean i can't right. talk to you on behalf of a lot of people but for myself i i'm not so i'm quite ashamed to say it but i don't read as much as i should and I definitely would like to do that more. And I think sometimes I, I work better with visuals and, and color and shapes like that. And which is why podcasts go down well with me. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I always find that, um, uh, sorry, there we go, come on. Uh, I always find that, yeah, when I'm designing, um, I kind of have to bear that in mind of how people will integrate with it and actually would it be too much of an overload if that if they come with it. So it's similar to this spread you can see now, it's obviously, a three quarters of the page is actually by the image and then you've got a little bit of text which right. could relate to what he's saying and i've kind of picked out a color being um you know the red from the flower um and what you guys can see now is i've highlighted a title and there's an awesome tool um so i click command command alt j 
And the reason why I know that is because Alt J is one of my favorite bands. Long story. <laughs> but yeah, I, I learned that. I remember thinking, oh, that's a cool way to remember things. But yeah, Alt J is a good band. If you don't know it, definitely check them out. Um, and this allows you to, so I want to do like a little key line, a fake key line um, for the title, like a word, mm. like a little underlining thing. So yeah, you could use the line tool, things like that. But then making sure that that's consistent for how many spreads you're working with, like in terms of the, the spacing is important. So when you do command out J and you highlight the text, if you go on below and you go on rule, you can see already, um, can I zoom in a bit? Though? Yeah, you can see already there's a line there, but obviously it's a bit too close. So um, if you do the offset, um and then you can see it's now going lower so that's always quite a nice way of doing it and i, and I actually this awesome. is actually a tool i learned quite not even that um not even that uh quite recently actually <laughs> going yeah. to a, recently to a point like maybe a few years back but you know something that i would have been very very sure if i was at uni say for example yeah i mean i think yeah. I, it's cool especially with things like this you get to learn like a lot of those kind of neat tricks that take some people Forever to kind of ever 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 to. I I feel like there was a lot of repeating. <laughs> I don't know if it's the same. I think we've got another technical glitch, my friends. Um, we do apologize. We're back in uh, back in two seconds. Well, hello. Hi, folks. Welcome back. Look who it is. I'm your friend and host. I'm here to host Kieran. Hello. Welcome back. Sorry about the technical difficulties. We had some glitches in the matrix, but we are back. <laughs> hello. Hi, Kieran. How's it going? I'm good, Anika. Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> this is a dream dream. I have been wanting to host Kieran for the longest time, and I'm just glad that we're here together. So it's happened. let's get started. Different circumstances. <laughs> but yes, welcome, Absolutely. my friends. You're back as well. And you stayed with us. So I appreciate you, you staying. Um, yeah, so yeah thanks let's jump for, into it. Yeah, thanks for tuning in uh, to the stream, both on YouTube and Behance. This is the drill. I have to do it. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, we are live both on YouTube and Behance. If you have any questions for Kiran, make sure to drop them in the chat. We are working on the first spread here. So let's get, we let's, are. let's dive back into it. Let's see what let's it dive is. Into it. So whilst um, there was technical glitches in the background, my brain started to figure out other things in the back. So going back to the very first spread, and um, I do apologize because I might go back and forth. That's kind of how my brain operates. Um, yeah. But I promise you there is a method to the madness. Um, obviously the white of the text and in her shirt is a bit of a clash. So I want to darken just ever so slightly. Um, and it's quite crudely done, but I'll show you how to do that. I'll edit it on via Photoshop. Um, I'm going to bring it in Photoshop. You can see here and edit it. I hope you guys can see. Um, and then I just use a darker gradient, basically, just so I can add a bit of a depth um, on top of her image. And then that way, the A will be a bit more cleaner. Um, so, yeah, that's just another way of uh, of doing it. I love that. Yeah, we just had a question in chat from Stuart asking if you color grade your images. I was I really like that because I have never considered it personally because I never use images in my spreads. So this is, this is mm. a fun one. It's good to see the process of color grading as well. Yeah, no, that was a good question. It's um, it's always nice because I, I I'm always curious to see you know who pops into our streams. You know whether it's um people who've been designing for years or people who are just starting out. 
Um, yeah. And those kind of questions are really good because, it, I mean, it sounds like you're definitely a designer and you know your stuff, but it's for those who are learning out, you know, it's very much new to them, right? Um, so hopefully you're in the right place to to learn. So you can see I've added a little darker gradient. Um, so it doesn't do much, but you can still see the flowers, which is the beautiful flowers. But hopefully that's enough that it allows the uh, white, I'm pointing to the screens if you see my hands, as if you can see the A on the, uh, on, you know what I'm trying to say, more legible. Um, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, this is very cheeky. I don't tend to do this. I usually, if I edit it, I will do like a PSD version and I can go right back. But for the sheer, for the sheer fact that we've got quite a few spreads that want to go through um, and also Danny doesn't mind me editing an image, I'm going to flatten the image and press save, which allows us to do a magical thing where if I save, uh, oh, are here. you saying it's going to auto-update in InDesign? It's going to auto-update InDesign. Wow. My mind, <laughs> My mind has been blown. I love that. <laughs> there love we go. The chat is also loving mm. it. It's a little bit darker than I expected, actually. I just um, mm -hmm. so This is me trying to be really fiddly. I'm going to do one little bit more and then maybe lighten it a bit on the opacity. Just enough so you can see. Um, and then, yeah, we'll keep, I mean, we've got a lot of good assets to work with, um, which is amazing. So for me, as an editorial designer, and many designers I'm sure can relate to this, when you've got good assets and good uh, content to work with, it just makes your life a little bit easier. Um, yeah. You know, you can produce good work when you've got good things to work with. Um, but I don't think it's going to update because it does this sometimes. So you might have to give it a little little kick up the uh, behind, a little refresh, and then it should. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, there I we go. It. I don't know if you guys can see. Yeah, um, I can see it. I can see it. It's a little vignette. 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 That's how exactly. you say it. <laughs> On the vignette. sides. <laughs> I love that. So do you, I have a question for you from Alessandra and Chad, but um, before I dive into that, I want to know if you pick your color palettes. How do you pick your color palettes for your spreads? Like mm. I've seen your work before and I really like all the colors you use. So is there something you use or is it just by working in design for a lot of years that you've developed that? It, it ranges. So what I want to show you is, um, so at the moment now, because I've got such a good range of imagery to work with, I yeah. can, um, I drop the tool and pick colors from the imagery, which for me, I mean, even picking up the red, which is a slightly different variant of red, but it's still, it has a nice contrast against the black. So I will pick up from the images, but another cool, cool site I use, which I'll let you guys into a secret, but it's not really a secret because it's online. Um, <laughs> is Color Adobe. It used to be called Cooler back in the day. But yeah, this allows you to um, explore any trends, anything that's currently going on in terms of imagery, in terms of color, I should say. Um, yeah. And what's cool as well, you can actually type in, if you go and create. Um, ah, it's all changed since I've been on there, actually. Um, you can yeah. see you've got the breakdown of all of the codes and then obviously the, the CMY, the breakdown code as well, which you can just drag that straight into your library. Um, and then open it up in InDesign. So sometimes I, I tend to use that um, and I explore and just have a little browse. Um, but in this case, I am going to work with the imagery colors because I think we've got such a nice, rich um, collection of different imagery to work with. And I'm kind of liking this spread at the moment, how it's working. Um, a part of me, actually, I think what I might do is... Um, Ooh, I love the scaling. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm going to do is, is that because you've got a lot of this excess black, which... I'm yeah. not gonna that's not the right same black, but um so actually that sorry, go for it. Honestly, I never use drop caps in my work anymore. So it was just a fun change to see you use it and it just adds <laughs> that variation in the design um mm. that really catches your eye. Like I can really see that bold um B right there to start the paragraph and the body copy. No one tends to, I mean, I. it's funny. I remember first discovering that and I feel like a child when they reach this, discover a new toy and you, you overuse it. And I probably, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't tend to, well, no, that's a lie. I do use it quite a bit in my work, uh, but I have a reason to why I use it. It's not like a random, I like drop caps. Um, so yeah, I, if, when it works for the spread, then it makes sense. And I think with Baskerville as a font, it's quite a nice, elegant font. So when you do add um a nice drop cat, it kind of brings it out quite nicely. What yeah. I'm doing now, I'm just, I want to do like a quote, um, a pull quote, and it could be, you know, from Obadi, or it could be from the individual himself, but it's just a nice way of showing how to work. And actually I've done something really cheeky where I picked out the black. Well, obviously the background is dark, but it's not necessarily black. I don't know if you guys yeah. can see there's like a slight difference. So um, I'm going to do it the right way and not the lazy, lazy boy way. So um, <laughs> what we do is we go back into Photoshop um, and then I can expand, shop. yeah. Love that. Um, and you guys will realize this, especially if you're quite new to 
mm -hmm. um, Adobe products that there's a lot of different programs that kind of uh, integrate with one another. And you probably know as well, Nick, like as a designer, like there's a lot of programs, so InDesign, Photoshop and Illustrator, you know, yeah. and probably for a few more, they all kind of link quite nicely together. Um, yeah, so, I love yeah. using InDesign, Illustrator and Photoshop together. Now I've been using Adobe mm -hmm. Express also a lot. So I use all of that in combination and it's just mind blowing how great the workflow is now. Um, with that sure. said, we do have a question in chat from Alessandra. Um, Alessandra yeah, asks definitely. if there are any tips or tricks that someone taught you in InDesign that you still use today. That's Ooh. a great question. Yeah. Tips and tricks. We're going back now. Um, <laughs> We're going back. Back to the Do you know what's funny? Actually, not even back to it. literally back like 20 minutes ago when I mentioned that Alt-J. <laughs> um, for anyone who's yeah. at the beginning of the stream, Alt-J, Command Alt-J. I keep saying Alt-J because the band. But also <laughs> I remember... Um, there's ways and tricks I think I think designers always find ways including myself of how to kind of skip out finding the maybe the right way of doing it and just doing it the way because it's quicker and um and I was definitely um uh in the wrong for sometimes maybe adding a line physically adding a line and I was yeah. you get away with it sometimes but if you're mm -hmm. working on a on a magazine of say I don't know 200 pages yeah, yeah. there's gonna come a point where something is not gonna marry up so yeah. when I do that alt j which um which I think you guys might have seen before with Command Alt J, it pops up with this rule and it allows you mm. to either put the rule underneath or if you do rule above. Yeah. Um, you can That's see a top tip right there. Yeah. I love this that. This is awesome. That is, I learned I that think, a lot. Yeah. I think that's like one of the things that we all do at first. And then we realize that, oh, this was inbuilt and we hadn't been taking advantage of the app <laughs> as much as we should have. Yeah. That, exactly yeah. that. <laughs> Do but you, you find ways everyone finds ways of making it work but um but yeah that's a good that's a good question um what about you like let me know um Alessandra, like what's your do you have any tips i've seen some of your cool stuff as well so let us know what's your cool tips do yeah let us know in chat if you guys have used indesign before or if you're just starting out if there's anything um that you've not known before and you just found out that blew your mind away because apps are powerful i love it of course and they're always updating as well which i think is, a, yeah. is something that um you know Oh, yeah, right, right. have you ever used the new auto styling feature that got released at Max twenty twenty two? I I feel like a naughty boy if I say no, I haven't. But I wish <laughs> I have. I wish I have. I told you, you know, no curveballs today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did not know I was gonna host you, so this is fun. I get to do curveballs. <laughs> I love that. But auto styling is super fun. You can essentially put like a body of text into InDesign from any other text editor. And mm. um, InDesign is going to prompt you with like the clipboard handling that, hey, do you want some auto styling to your text? So it has mm. some packs already built in where there's paragraph styles and like headline body copy subheaders where it will mm. automatically, once you click the play button, it will automatically just apply it to your body copy, which is amazing. Mm. Mm, nice. Yeah. I like that. So what I've kind of done is I've added like a bit of a, a, a vignette gradient. Um, which I could I should refine it, but I want to do a bit more spreads. But you kind of hopefully get the idea of how it would extend, um, and in that way, the original being there and then a bit more there, which allows us to add that pull quote. Um, with this one, I might actually save this out because I may come back to that one. That's and also important tip: it's probably never and only because I have permission to do so from Abadi, um Edit the imagery, so especially if it's photography imagery as well. Um, yeah. I yeah would never advise obviously editing someone else's unless you have permission of course to do so yeah. um and sometimes you get that when you've got like a lot of dead space um whether it's an ocean drip backdrop or a dark black drop you can um you can extend and add things on top which is nice Absolutely. to do yeah i love that you're making use of negative space here to add that quote as well that's mm. really helpful so um how did you how did you start putting all these design principles into use like did, did someone teach you that hey negative space is important or did that come to you with experience in designing so many spreads i know you've worked with some really really cool brands that i want to collaborate with so i would love some tips for, <laughs> for that as well how do you want my secrets you... anika all my secrets <laughs> are going to come out national live on air absolutely um... yes let's do it let's share you know what? There was a, um, secrets. i i um I worked at quite a few different agencies over the years um, before mm -hmm. going freelance, but there was one agency in particular called Z Creative, and I learned so much by being. It was a very small team, um, and I loved that as well. And we, I learned so much tips from my creative director there at the time because we worked very closely together. Um, and he would show me, um, you know, I would work on a project, and so would he. Sometimes together at the same time, and I would kind of watch from the side of my shoulder him designing, and I he would do it so much more quicker. 
And it's not necessarily because, I mean, obviously he's got more skills and experience, but I think as well, he kind of mastered the art of um, shortcuts or knowing, you know, when to, you know, use a spread or, or design certain things in certain ways. And yeah. I was always, I wouldn't say jealous, but I was always like, why can't I kind of be like that? But I think that was something over time, I became more patient and I understand, you know, kind of what he's doing and, and learn more tricks. And I, I've always kind of kept that mentality of, um, you know, it might take a while to learn, but once you've mastered it, it will make your workload so much more streamlined. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I always find that that's something that um, over the years um, I've been able to do and, and, and it's and it stuck with me as well. It really has stuck with me over the years. Which is cool. Yeah, that's a great tip. I think learning, if you're especially working in like a small agency situation, it's like really great to learn from your peers because mm. having that experience really kind of helps you know what's the right way to go about things. Even like if someone is not explicitly telling you, it's just like working with someone in the team. I think that's why Adobe Live has been so important for me in my journey because I feel like I'm always working with creatives at the same time and mm. I gather so much information implicitly that I wouldn't have if I was just working by myself at home during the panini. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so true. It's locked away like a, like a gremlin. Like, that's pretty much what I do actually on a day-to-day -day basis. But yeah, it's so true. It's so true. And I think, um, you know, even for you guys are tuning in now, it's kind yeah. of, um, you know, it's, it's, I'd always encourage that more because it's, it's a chance to see how other designers work, how they operate. Um, yeah. Everyone's got their own way of working and it doesn't, say it's, it doesn't mean it's right, but there's just different ways of learning. Um, what you guys can kind of see I'm doing now is um, we've got our little um, quotation marks, but what I want to do is I want to make sure I'm, I'm outlining, which is a bit cheeky, but I'm doing that, um, so that everything is kind of nicely neat. Oh, spacing a bit too. For that. So now you can see I've done this little thing where it allows it to be quite neat um, together, yeah. um, and then so forth. That is so, pretty cool. We have some answers for the question um, we prompted the chat. So oh, yeah. um, why don't we go through some of those? Sure. Yeah, Stuart says, I would say learn to lay out the right way. No returns for spacing. Don't use separate text boxes. They will they will come back at you when you don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> they will. That sounds like someone who's actually been through an experience of like, oh, I get yeah. shivers at night thinking about it. I love that. that so uh, yeah. Um, Alessandro says, thank you for answering. Um, and Carol says, been using InDesign for years and just recently saw the Pathfinder in it. Yeah, I think oh. Tony Harmer does a lot of end design as well. Um, yes. I know you hosted Tony a few weeks ago. And, I hosted uh, my good friend Tony recently. Yeah, yeah. top lad. <laughs> yeah, really nice I think. Guy. Yeah, Penny says paragraph styles and libraries are a lifesaver for me in end design. I love it. Yeah, mm. all these tips. Very good point. Yeah, no, share the, share the tips, my friends, because I always find like it, it's it's so useful to just know um, how people operate and how they work as well. Absolutely. Um, know yeah and, and by no has... means oh sorry go for it oh go ahead sorry no i was, I was, I was just chatting ram rambles to be fair. i was gonna say there's um even how i'm designing now there's and i've been doing this for quite a while there's no definitive answer to say this is correct uh, obviously there's certain rules and things in place i.e grids and whatnot that you kind of have to follow but i always do find it is very much um interpretive or kind of subjective in a sense where you know it's design right so people have different opinions um and different workflows didn't work in it so i always think it's it's what's more comfortable for you guys you know how you operate um absolutely so yeah. yeah i think knowing the rules before breaking them is important but then do what feels right to you keeping the rules in mind is the secret mm. that's all the secrets we have for you oliver um, i want to say hi <laughs> to it. folks in chat because i see some new faces um so before we get any further with any of the questions i want to say hi to anthony Claudie is in the chat. Hey, Claudie. Yeah, hey, um, Steve Val is jumping in as well. So, hi. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here. We have hi, about um, 30 more minutes here. Just giving your time check, Kiran. Um, yeah, so... Um, How has yeah. this time gone so quick? I mean, to be fair, it might have been a bit <laughs> of the... Time flies. <laughs> but we have. But thank you for joining us. What I want to do is... Um, I definitely never got as much done, but it's, it's the way it is. Um, but what I want to do is... And you're probably thinking, why has got a massive S? Um, it's S for Sharika, but... <laughs> I want to do this thing where um, you can see her guitar and the way it comes out, but I want to do it so that the S kind of sits behind the guitar mm -hmm. um, and then comes out. So I'm going to do that. Um, oh, are you going to create wanna... a clipping mask for it? Uh, that's pretty similar. Um, okay. You'll see. Yeah, you'll see. Okay, um, okay. Keeping me on my toes. I love that. Of course. Got to be. <laughs> got to be. Love it. Um, um, we have a and... question 
from Anthony sure. because we're talking layouts. I think it's relevant right here. Um, Anthony asked, mm. do you grid out your layouts or do you freehand them? That's a great question. No, no. so that's a very, exactly. That's a very, very good question. I am, um, no, I, you can see going back um, actually to a spread, maybe we don't have one. So we've mm -hmm. got currently a five on two, if I'm right to say. Yeah, so gutter in the center of five and two. But yeah. to be fair, I, I always find that um, when I'm designing, um, I, I just to make it more interesting for the stream, rather than showing you just boxes, I do tend yeah. to just use boxes first because it allows you to think where image you would go. But you guys want to sit down here for 90 minutes and watch you add boxes all on the screen, which is why I'm yeah. adding the imagery into to make it more interesting. But, um, but yeah, I tend to work to a method, which is obviously that. And then when I may be doing things a bit more like now where I'm freestyling with the S and how that will sit, mm -hmm. um, you can see, even though it's kind of going overlapping, the edge of it, it still meets the gutter. So there is still a method to the madness, even if it looked look like there is any bit. I promise you there is. Um, so, it's funny you say that because I only see method in here. Um, I see you using the box uh, model, which is really inspiring because I use that in my work as well. Like just put a bunch mm. of boxes for like the framework, like a low fidelity design where everything's going to go and have mm. images placed in and like a text box and then just map everything out. That's like a great approach to like get started because mm. it's like so low fidelity that even if you make a mistake or the client doesn't like the design, you can easily go back in and change it super quickly. So true. Okay. So, so true. So what are we doing now? So what we are doing now, I was just thinking, because again, we've got these columns and um, we're using Lauren Epsom, which is, can yeah. be your best friend if you don't have copy ready, but I want to have the copy ranging right down here in this panel. And then I'm going to go in Photoshop and edit it so that this S sits behind, just ever so behind um, this part of the guitar. Um, so that hopefully will work quite nice. And also she's looking in that direction as well, which I yeah. thought would be quite nice. Um, actually, do you know what? I'm going back on myself. I'm going to have this title here because the S will make sense if you know what the S is and her name is Sharika. So I'm going to have that as, um, yeah, it's actually weird. See, again, I, I was introducing obviously who these people are, but Sharika is the person I've known. That, we've known each other since I was 12 years old. Wow. Uh, I won't say how old yeah, I am now. I'll, I'll, leave you, I'll leave you guys to, to guess that. But, um, but yeah, we've known each other <laughs> for a very long time and she was actually my, um, at my wedding, she was actually um, our, our wedding singer as well. So sherika has got a special place in my heart for sure. She's um, a top, top uh, musician. So definitely check her stuff out. Yeah, uh, I love that you're highlighting all these creators because I think it's like a great way to um, really highlight your community and bring out like the best of all the worlds here. I love, I love the um, in design. I love the music behind the scenes. Um, I love it. It's like a glimpse into your personal life as well, which is which is all this yeah. fun. I love seeing the behind the scenes. And also, like it's just like it makes it make, makes it more real one. But also, uh, you know, this is in homage, obviously, Black History Month as well in the US. And you know, there's a lot of people doing amazing things. And you know, it, it's important. You know, in particular, obviously, we're focusing on the Black community. But in general, it's I always find that you know, and that's kind of the premise of a lot of the work that I do. It's all about community. It's all about being respectful of different cultures, nationalities. You know, yeah. that that's something that is to me bog standard so um so yeah i think that's quite important to do and um it's nice to kind of have my friends on the stream um my friends i should say the assets just to say you've sent me the lovely stuff but hopefully i think some of them might even be here actually so if you're here awesome um right let's get into photoshop and um this is the thing you'll when you're designing you kind of get so fiddly and you're like ah, mm -hmm. people don't so do you think you're gonna design the whole is it like a spread i'm sorry i missed that in the beginning but do you sure. think you're gonna design like four pages is it like a whole zine we're doing um what's the plan? Uh, you know what I, I i would love to come in here with like because usually this is obviously what i do for a living where it's you know we do cover we do the inside we'll do you know a bit of the binding and all that elements of it but i think one thing i was really keen to show you guys was um how i work with imagery how i work with color typography but also um just creating a various different amounts of spreads and just showing yeah. various layouts of the spread so um in an ideal world if we had a different you know maybe more time and whatnot um, I'll be working on a cover or maybe we even do a chapter opening for each of the individuals. But mm -hmm. because of time and the way it's going as well, I want to make sure that I have at least a spread for each person. Yeah. Um, so, so far we've got Danny, Sharika, Obadi, and then the last one will be Kunda Kids. So I want to, yeah, so at the moment now, and then if we have time at the end, if we have time, big if, um, I will do mock-ups, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, let's, let's do the sprints. I'm always let's those quick. Um... I'm using a tablet right now. Sometimes I know you guys have this, but 
I've got weird wrists or sometimes my wrist goes over the tablet and it moves it, it shunts it up slightly. That's not me shunting, that's just my wrist playing playing games with me. Um, so yeah, so we're I'm masking the image now? Is that what you're doing? What, what, what I'm going to do is actually, and it's probably a better way of doing it, but I would just, um, I would cut that particular section of the image. And then mm -hmm. when I add it on top, I can do it that way. Um, but I know that I, what I'm doing it now, you know, let me just double check whereabouts that is. Okay. So I'm going to do about a half. So what I've done is I've selected that element. Love it. Yeah, we have some questions in chat rolling in that I'm going to get to in just a second. Um, but sure. I love the process. I love that you're creating multiple spreads so that people know your design approach as well. So it's not just one yeah. spread we're seeing, but like multiple, multiple ways. Yeah. yeah. Just I mean, it's how my brain operates as well. I can't, I yeah. can't focus on one thing for too long. I don't know if anyone else is like that, but I, yeah, I need to mix it up for my sanity. <laughs> so adding some design um, elements on the spread now? Yeah, so now, in fact, I always find it a bit quite magic. What I want to do is I'm going to pick a color out from here. Maybe it is wood. That'll be quite nice. Let's have a look. Let's get rid of this red. Oh, that's that's a good color. Yeah, to complement the design. Mm. Oh, actually, do you know what? I had another idea. Anika, I'm having ideas as we design. I don't even <laughs> want to get round to the last person. This is what happens, honestly. I apologize in advance, people. Yeah. They we just... got to get to the last person. <laughs> we have to. We have to. <laughs> we have to. If not, you just pull me off like no a pressure, No pressure. pressure. We just have to. I'm just saying. <laughs> Bring it on, bring it on, <laughs> I, I live for the pressure. Um, no, I really don't. Um, no, what I was thinking is, um, only because we've got um, an image on the previous one, I think on, on a white background, mm -hmm. I'm gonna add it on a color, so. Oh, you're gonna make like a cutout. I see, I see yeah, what you're doing. Yeah, I was thinking that, I was thinking that. Um, what I would do is I might do a nice little tint on that. Um, I love it. Stuart in the chat says it is the things like what Kiran is doing with the top of the S and the top of the copy alignment really tightens up a layout. Those are the things that really make a difference. Love that. Yeah, we're glad mm. you're here, Stuart, and enjoying Kiran's process. Yeah, thanks love for this, thanks Love for the joining. live feedback. Yeah. Keep them coming. I like to hear nice things. <laughs> it's, like, it's not like, oh, he's a rubbish designer. That's, that's good to know. Because there's always one thing to, I always think, to design... Um, live of course and then design when you're behind closed doors but again opportunities like this allows you to sort of you know have an in, an insight into my world a bit and um yeah yeah because when i design i don't know if you're the same anika but like i'm like a like a ninja i'm at home spotify it and just locked away for hours and hours but yeah it's quite nice to share with, with you guys as well so you can see what i'm working on so uh, absolutely welcome. i love the refinement that's going on in here yeah, I think that'd be quite nice. Maybe as in like a nice, um, because again, it's got the over, so you can see now her guitar is kind of just overlapping it ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then the alignment. Can we of... zoom in on that just a little bit? Just so the can. chat can see. I'm sure people can see it, but I just wanted to be more accessible to people. Some, someone's may, someone may be watching it on the phone. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. cool. I like I like how that's come along. So, and I kind of want to have it at the top, maybe just before that there. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much, I think that'd be quite nice for Shriek. Yeah, and again, she's kind of looking into the spread because I always think that's quite important, the direction of imagery as well. Um, yeah. That's pretty much how, yeah, it's, it's not a case of obviously just adding an image, drop, drag and drop. You, you kind of have to think about how the images actually work on the spread and if it's working in correlation with content or, sorry, with copy or say a drop, say a, a quote, I should say, or body copy in mm -hmm. different ways. In this case, it's very much um, body copy. Um, but yeah, I think that's quite nice. Um, I'm playing way too quickly on these, but I want to, I want to, what I want to do is I want to do the last person and then I want to go back and refine Absolutely. and do some more. Yeah. So that way let's we get everyone because I would be yeah, a terrible designer if I missed everyone else except for one person. <laughs> Did everyone pick one? Yeah, let's do a quick walkthrough of yeah. all the spreads that you've created now and let's jump into the last design and then we can come back and refine it. That let's sounds like it. a plan. Okay, so um, yeah, we can see, let me, where are we? All my method to the madness, which I think we might have actually done a few of these now, actually. I'll just show you. We have. Um, you're pretty quick. You say them. you're slow, but you're doing this. You're <laughs> shelling these design out, designs out. It's all very art attack. Like, here's what I made earlier. <laughs> um, yeah, no, because again, when I, it's weird, but, and I know I'm not the only one that has this mindset, I'm sure, but because I've done so many editorial designs over the years, mm -hmm. you kind of have an idea of how things will roughly look as well, or at least how 
um, the space on the page will work and operate depending on how much content you have. So when I'm designing these, um, sorry, my computer's been a weird finger. When I'm designing these, um, these when I'm drawing these threads, I should say, I'm yeah. drawing it with the mindset of knowing from years of editorial design how things would look. And, you know, you can see here, it's, it's not very that like, clear, but I'll zoom a bit more in so you guys can see. Um, there's four columns. I mean, that's my yeah. attempt at four columns anyway, but you get the idea. <laughs> Um, yeah, everyone's got really big heads, but <laughs> um, so yeah, should we run? We we'll just run through quickly the the free spreads, and then maybe we'll type yeah. the last spread as well. Yeah, so I thought it was quite nice to um to add Danny's um. In fact, you know what? We need to add in Danny's surname because as an actress, you probably would want to make sure your full name is always being mm -hmm. um shown. Not That's Danny. A good so I'm going to add in the uh, um. So I, I love this. I love this real authentic process where you're going back and looking at your design again um, and finding that this is something that I missed in the first iteration and this is what I need to do. And it's just so authentic and natural to see you do that live also. It's it's mm. really it's really wholesome. No, for me, I mean I this is obviously, you know, we prepare and we we have things in mind before streams, but I think um you know i i have to i have to draw i always have to draw before anything i do and um i you, i know nika you definitely hosted a few, uh, you've been in a few of my streams before where i talk about the moleskin books and i know i've got a weird collection of moleskin books and yeah. that is no word of a lie <laughs> i generally have a lot of moleskin books because i have to draw out ideas of how things will look um so yeah it's it's it. all very rough um yeah i'm gonna leave this for now so yeah we've got danny's spread um mm -hmm. we've got this one which is i think is quite nice um so again, how my brain works is that this is not going to be a, um, if we had time and we created an actual book, mm -hmm. you know, it probably won't be as thick of a book because of how much content there is. Um, but always in keeping in mind that kind of gutter center point. So that's kind of by default. Um, you've got nothing that will be lost if it was bounded. Yeah. Um, so you've got the flowery kind of one panel and then the, the head and everything else in another. Um, so nothing gets too lost in there. And if it does, it's not that, um, no pun intended, it's not that deep. That's no pun intended. <laughs> and that kind of is. Um, and then the copy here. Um, and sometimes as well, if it's depending on if I'm on white space, you can see here, mm -hmm. um, we've got the Esper, we've got the Adobe Live um, slug at the top. It mm -hmm. had a line underneath, but for the sheer fact, I didn't want the line to kind of cross over into the imagery. I've kept it on this one panel. Um, and to be fair, we could have had it there as well on the white. Oh, that is um, interesting. Yeah, that's a nice approach. Yeah, so, so if this image here, for example, was just... Um, say one page mm -hmm. you could probably get away with having your underline um sorry if it was like uh there we go one page you could then have the underline because it, it doesn't actually cut into anything yeah um that's kind of actually cool actually it's weird um but yeah in this case i, I won't have it but what i will do is for the last one i, I will do that i'll keep it the lines there because there is a method. let's do it let's um, do the last one and what i want to do is i want to go back to my drawing scamps and pick out a mm -hmm. style um, I love it. I just want to give you a time check. We have about yeah. um, 15 minutes left, roughly. Ooh, so. Where is the time going? <laughs> All right. <laughs> the time is flying, my friend. I have to it say. has it has flew. It has flew. Okay, right. Uh, let's do the fourth one. Let's let's do it. Let's do it. We let's can do, do this. It. We can do it. I feel like I um yeah, this is a mission, but I I, I happily accept it. Um right, I'm gonna do a quick mock up um because it's a book cover as well. Um yeah. We've got a beautiful mock-up, which we've mm -hmm. downloaded. And again, you can get mock-ups from multiple places. Um, Adobe Stock, of course, have really good mock-ups. Yeah. Um, but look out for those fake mock-ups, because sometimes you get those weird ones where it's like, I'm a PNG, but you're, you're not really a PNG. You're just, it's a checkered background, right? Yeah. So many memes about that. <laughs> like... Oh, yeah. We've all been there. We've all downloaded PNGs when first starting out thinking they're PNGs, but they're actually not. They're not PNGs. Like... Yep. I always think someone's got their way just to really mess with people by just uploading these <laughs> fake PNGs online, but really and truly. Um, yeah, it's not. Um, so yeah, we've got this lovely book, um, which we were talking about before, about A is for Africa, which mm -hmm. is part of Kunda Kids, um, yeah. you know, educating people on the continent. So, oh, colour will. Hmm? Did you did you grow up reading that book as well? No, no, I mean, this came out... If I was born maybe four weeks ago, then maybe because then it came out recently. It was, um, <laughs> it was that's nah, all right. That was a really bad joke on my part. No, no. So this came out quite recently. Um, but I think growing up, um, you know, without going way off stream here, um, so I grew up in South London, Brixton, which is predominantly a, a black area. Oh, that's really stretched. Let's do that again. 
Um, but then I went to uni in Winchester, which is predominantly white area. And I think understanding um, the different communities and different cultures, mm -hmm. that's pretty much the premise of how I design now. Um, yeah. You know, having that appreciation of different communities um, and also being able to showcase work like this and show you guys about other, you know, creatives in the space as well. So, right, if I okay. save that, then now... If you save, it's going to magically appear on the book. It's going to magic... You don't tell the secret before it's happened, Anika. That was the whole... <laughs> that was the... That was my, my one trick I had revealing today. The secret. <laughs> revealing the magician's secret over here. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. No. I back off now. I like it's all good. No, 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 no. I, I, I like when you jump in. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Um, I'm going to extend this background. Um, that looks pretty neat. Yeah, it's nice, and it's, it's, it's nice because um, do you know what's really cool as well? Um, you see like the corners of the animals. You see how it, I don't know where it's well. The way the mock-up has been designed, it works mm -hmm. quite nice. How they're kind of overlaid like that. Um, yeah. It was almost like I did it on purpose. Um, I love it. Um, <laughs> almost. Almost. Just not, just not quite. Right. Do you ever use the content-aware tool uh, to extend the background? Ah, uh, yeah. What is that again? I remember. Is that? There is it's, a tool it's, there, it's there. Let's it, it'll be a it'll be a good long few minutes. I don't want you to waste your time if I get into it. <laughs> but I, I do know of that though, and I yeah. really should be. Yeah, I was just curious if you use the content aware mm. tool, but I also do this. I think sometimes you feel like really go into mock-ups, but always mm. listen to I mean, there is a good pro tip right there that think about the licenses and if you can actually edit the mock-ups to make them your own before you yeah. jump in and do it, because Very licenses true. are a real thing. Yeah. Very true. And actually, what you would have noticed I've done there, which um, I'm not giving you a good example of how I operate, because that's very naughty. <laughs> I flatten the image, which again, I always mention that. And I did flag it, so I don't think I'm in trouble too much. You, mm -hmm. you don't flatten it because then you're not able to kind of go back if you need to make any yeah. edits. Um, yeah. But I flatten it so that it will automatically update. Um, but also the bit that I extended, if you would notice as well, on that book, there's a bit of shading. I would never extend there because you're going to have an awkward shading part. It's kind of the yeah. negative space enough that you can get away with doing mm -hmm. it in that. Um, basically, to justify why I did something really cheeky. And I think I've got away with it. I don't know if I did, but oh, we'll no. see. There are Who are clever clogs? Yeah, there are tons <laughs> of different ways to do the same thing. I just like sure. find it so fascinating that every designer ends up with like a similar product at the end where mm. we're meeting the objective, which is the same. But mm. getting to it is like so different. And I love to see like the different workflows. Um, mm. And also all these apps have like 10 different ways to do the same thing, which I really love. I personally love that. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different ways to, to learn about it. And uh, I mean, that's why this is perfect, perfect time to mention as well. And um, that's definitely my inner host now. But there's a lot of obviously replays you guys can rewatch and challenges mm -hmm. that allows you to kind of just, you know, sharpen those skills, right? And get better. Absolutely. Them, yeah. Along. Subscribe to our um, YouTube channel. It is bit.ly slash Adobe Live yeah. YouTube or Adobe Live. I don't know. It's in the chat. It's in the description. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's there. Yeah, we it's have there. a very fun uh, creator challenge going on with uh, Storm and Pixie, which is like a back-to-back -back challenge. So make sure to subscribe and watch all the replays. They are available right after the stream ends. And it will yeah, be available nice. for our stream as well. So if you are watching this on replay, hello. Hello, replay folks. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hello. I feel like we're in the past, but we're still here. Hello, my friends. <laughs> Love um, it. So this is the right, last thread okay. we're designing. Oh, this is the last bread we're designing um and i wanted to um yeah I, i'm just trying to think i mean what which spread am i doing actually i've gone off pizza because i wanted to have it on a single page and uh, actually do you know how long do we have okay right we have about 10 minutes i don't find it fine man <laughs> I, find it fine. I, I think they're good no pressure <laughs> yeah it's cool um yeah. what we'll do is is that i want to have a solid um background of the blue because it is a nice blue actually in a different world i would have that psd asset mm -hmm. of that blue because it's got like a nice gradient um yeah. and then i'd kind of pick out um you know that that kind of shape and color um and actually i do want to show you a cool trick whilst i think i've got time for it yeah, i definitely got time for it um, yeah once you do that i have a couple of questions from chat um once you're done sure. with the spread i'll get to them i mean you can ask uh, me if you want whilst i'm chat. doing it or yeah, no, I don't want to disrupt your process and slow you. Okay. If I, ask <laughs> I say that as if I can multitask and I really can multitask. So I'm glad you didn't actually. So it, but it panned out well, actually, that you said that. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll, I'll let you do cool. your thing. Chad, hang on, hang on. Okay. We're going to get to the question. We got you guys. We got you. We got, we got you. you. Oh, I love um, the wide. That increases the legibility by a lot. 
Yeah. Yeah. What I want to do, I'm going to add a pull quote in the center, but I'm going to do it where it's a nice text wrap around as well. Oh, um, yeah. That's a fun dip. Add my, oh, no, no, no. It was two. Um, command Alt J, good band. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely run its course. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually add that. Yeah. Love it. So while we're working on that, um, I think we can mm -hmm. talk about it. Um, not to okay. disrupt your workflow a lot, no, but no, we're good for it. are there any, it. what's your latest favorite project, latest and greatest favorite project that you've worked <sighs> on? Ooh. Was it the Trek, David? But <laughs> I love you just dropped that in there. Great. <laughs> yeah, I did the uh, for anyone who I, I mean I think he's you know I think he's like big in the states maybe I don't know mm -hmm. he's big in the UK Craig David mm -hmm. so yeah I worked with Penguin um, to design um, a book cover for Craig David so that was a cool project to work with um, for me they're still breathing the one I showed at the very beginning yeah I want to say fun because of the nature of what it's about um, yeah. but it's necessary and I think. For me, um, being a part of a project like that, it allowed me to, um, I guess, tap into maybe areas of my brain I didn't think was even there. Because even even though it's finished the job, we're still having talks. I did Adobe Max yeah. year before last, um, and I shared that. Yeah. That was the year, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and then I, I shared the work for that. So it was cool. It was really nice to, um, it was really, really nice to, to work on that. Um, and show that so that's that's yeah where i'm at um what am i doing what am i doing okay so dexter text wrap around that's yeah yeah oh so you're gonna use a box as a frame to wrap your text around it that's really cool that's a neat yeah. trick i don't um, think i've ever used it like this here we go yeah i mean I, what i would do is so i use the box just i mean I'm not gonna have pink in there but it's just so i can see yeah. where it's at yeah um it's like how how jazzy is this guy um what i would do is the only thing to, to learn about this actually when you do do a text wrap if mm -hmm. you've got paragraph break lines it makes it awkward so yeah. it's better to have rows and rows of text which is not a nice thing but when you i always find when i'm in projects where it is a lot of text like this for example um you're able to um break it up quite nicely and it's more digestible for the reader and viewer so yeah. what i've done is here um i think that should so does the yeah. text wrap around move? Oh, it does dynamically move. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Think. So you, you've got that space, which actually, I mean, you, it works with different shapes as well. You can do circles, you can do, yeah. and I learned this at that place I mentioned to you um, uh, about, you know, where I learned stuff as a designer, mm -hmm. um, which is cool. Obviously you'll realize now it's in that space. It, it it feels like it's being wrapped around. So that's what the text is missing. But if you go to, um, if I undo and I go to. You want to bring it to front? Oh, interesting. Are you ignore? Yeah, because even if you bring it to oh, front, that's... it's still wall clash. That's a um, cool tip. Yeah. You do ignore. Um, I'm so glad that worked then, because I'd be so convinced. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. He, uh... <laughs> I, I do love it. Know a little bit. I do a little bit. Um, Chad's, yeah, Chad is that. loving the text trap. I love it. Penny yeah. says, you got this. We got this. I'm showing some tricks. Even though time is like not on our side today, I'm showing you some tips. Oh, time and is actually, totally on your side. You're doing great. Yeah? Don't worry about it. Good, yeah, good. we've done all four spreads. We've done mock-ups. There's so much you've covered. Nice. I love that. Actually, yeah, we did mock-ups, actually. I'm quite proud of that. Yeah, we did mock-ups. Um, I'll potato to celebrate out there. Um, and also, yeah, you'll realize as well, you have this awkward um, where it kind of cuts off, which even though it's mm -hmm. long reps it's yeah. still a, a bug for me. So I do hyphenate, um, take it off. So now, now it's nice and neat. Um, so yeah, again, you might have a, a pull quote from um, from Louis from Louisa, mm -hmm. um, uh, the founder, and then yeah, that could be a nice way. And this is a very big box, actually. I might have to have a few more lines of copy in there, but um, it's all good. It's all good. It's about showing the process and how you go about it and your exactly. design approach. I love to see exactly it. that. So, so do you um, end up creating paragraph and character styles at the end, or um, once you have like the base layout set up and then you start adding pages, that's when you create the styles? Exactly that. Exactly that. Because um, yeah, how my brain operates, I think I mentioned a few times now, is that yeah. I, I have to get things out on page to get a feel for how it look. Um, yeah. And then once it's there, then I'm comfortable enough to then make the styles. And then, um, so a good example of the Still Breathing book, that was a 300 page hardback which is, yeah, when you open up a document, and you see that many pages, it doesn't feel like it's even a real thing. 
um mm. but yeah, you need to have styles so that everything is consistent um and there is a bit of a method to what you're doing as well Ooh. absolutely and especially when you're working with large documents it comes in really really handy because if you want to change the font you can just do it with like a click of a button exactly love it it's pretty cheeky um yeah yeah all right just looking at chat if you have any questions um don't have any questions we have about seven minutes to go um so if you have any last minute questions for kiran drop them in the youtube or the behance chat um i have my eyes on both so yeah there's no getting away from ash I haven't done the saving anika oh my god this How is your stream as well. <laughs> <laughs> i have actually i did save the yeah, job and open i didn't know it is like I didn't yeah. notice that. That's why I didn't say anything. I was like, "Oh, you're good. You're safe. You're good." I was saying, I did, "I did a command S. I did a command S. Um, there we go. Nice command S. I'm a good friend. Save your work if you're working or lurking with us here. Today. Yes, my friends. Always, yeah. it's important to do that. It is important to do that. Oh, I love how sneakily you just put the title on the other page while I wasn't looking. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you and how many thousand people were watching wouldn't realize that. Um, no, because I what I was thinking was actually. Yeah, it's good to break things up and um, obviously we've got our titles here and, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, it, for me, because there's a lot of content on this page, um, it's nice to have a page where it, it can breathe on its own, if that makes yeah. sense. You don't want to overshadow, like I wouldn't dare put an image on here Absolutely. because it would just be overkill. Um, but yeah, like now that's all nicely grouped. That's a bit of a big, huge gap, but you get the idea of what I'm trying to do. Um, yeah. So I want to have it maybe more in the center a little bit. Um, I love the use of negative space in a design. I think that's like a common theme with the whole spread that you make. Usually, I have seen your work before, mm. so I'm a fan. I love that. Uh, it's you know, definitely thinking, a skill to have. I think over years, it's something that it it, it comes with how you operate yeah. in design. Like it's something that even designing now, and it might look like I'm being super quick with it, but because I mean I do this every day, right? For a living, you you kind of just jump into it, but. That's not to say to get complacent because we're very designed. There's obviously different challenges and different people you work with, like different things and so forth. So, um, yeah, in that regards, it's it's the nature of the job. But um, yeah, we we'll see how it works. Do you know what I was thinking? But it's definitely not a case of good timing we have. But I was gonna, <laughs> I'll tell you what I was gonna do. Um, make the book slightly big enough, but like it overlaps. So like, if you can imagine, maybe we can do like, that. You have you have two you minutes. We have two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> All right, you're putting me on my toes today. All right, we have let's, one let's minute, um, and then we can do like a quick, quick yeah. two minute recap, and then we'll have to wrap up. Nice. Actually, it won't work anyway because I've actually realized there is a shading on there, so it would just be. Oh real yeah, there awkward, is. Yeah, so. you'd have to but, mask it out. Exactly, but that's a stream for another day, my friends. Um, Absolutely. So let's yeah, quickly do like a quick recap of all the spreads, and then you can tell us we where can. we can follow you after the stream if we want to keep in touch, and um, of we can. say goodbye after that. Yeah. Yeah. So just to go a bit of round cap. Round cap. <laughs> that was like a mixture of roundup and recap. Uh, a round yeah. cup. Um, so yeah, the idea was that uh, we're focusing on four um, amazingly talented black creatives within the UK who I've got a direct linkage with, um, playing with different spreads, um, you know, utilizing the colors from the imagery, but also working with how text can sit there as well, um, mm -hmm. using a two column grid. Um, similar again, where we're still. We're in the two column grid, for example, the body copy, but we're allowed to kind of, you know, be a bit cheeky and a bit freestyling it by kind of going over it. Um, and again, extending the background of the image to add um, a quote on top as well, yeah. which is quite nice. Um, and again, pulling out key colors, but also drop cap, don't forget. And of course, our Alt J, um, Alt J, no, Command Alt J, not Alt J. Yes, yeah. Alt J, which is nice little tips um mm -hmm. sharika's spread which is probably the most dynamic spread i guess out of all of them if i had more time i'd do a bit more of that but um yeah. showing you how text um can actually work with imagery as well you know mm -hmm. another way we could have done maybe her leg could have been overlapping it slightly or maybe one part of the shoe overlaps the s there's ways yeah. you can do that and it kind of just brings it out to life um and also it works nice because she's looking at that direction as well into the text which should be awkward i think if it's looking the opposite way yeah, um, that kind of points to the design and tells. Yeah, the and same thing for um, yeah. exactly same thing for book covers as well. Like I do the same thing when I do a book cover design. Um, if it's not typographic, it's imagery. Mm -hmm. it, it makes sense for them to look in the direction of where you would open the book from, rather yeah. than them looking into the spine. If that makes sense. Um, and then yeah, this one, um, I'm happy with showing you guys this obviously, but I would like to have done more on this, but no big deal. Um, mm -hmm. but it was showing you ideas of how we would work with the mock-ups. 
Um, and also how he would uh, include like a nice text wrap if you want to really highlight some of the um, cool quotes within there too. I love that. Yeah, these are all some really cool uh, pro tips right here from Kiran. Um, where can people follow you if they want to get in touch with you, Kiran? Yes, my friends. Uh, right, let me minimize this and go back and show you where my website is. Uh, where is my website? There we go. No, it's not there. It's not there. <laughs> not this is how professional website, and organized I, I am. No, we got it's it. A, we're good for it. We're good for it. We've got links uh, in so chat yeah. if you guys want to follow um, Kieran. Yeah. Yeah. So kieranlewis.com, you can find me on there. Um, and again, I mean, I, I update it to a point, but usually my Instagram is where I'm more active. So yeah, here you'll see a few examples of work I've done. Um, I'm also a Adobe Live host as well, alongside mm. Anika and the beautiful team. So bits and bobs there. Feels like an inception watching Adobe Live via Adobe Live profile. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, kirinos.com, you can see section. me. Yeah. <laughs> Adobe, Adobe Live, sorry. Adobe section. Anyway, um, and Instagram, yeah, you can you can follow me there, uh, Kieran Anthony L. Um, and yeah, I'm usually posting pictures either of work or talks I've done or, you know, when I give talks at schools. Um, but also something I'd like to flag as well is that I'm doing an event um, with Turnheads, which is a really cool platform which works with young students. Um, and I will be, it's an online free event where we're talking about clients and budgets and deadlines um, and life as a freelance designer. But also if you're not a design, freelance designer, it's something that maybe you're interested in. So if you are curious to know, um, we follow Turnheads on Instagram um, and you'll find, in fact, you will find this link. So rather than having to do a screenshot on my yeah, little It might be on your link. website, right? exactly yeah. that oh, my, my, love that thank you for uh sharing kiran but thank you so much you all for joining us today live here on adobe live if you want to watch the replay subscribe to the youtube channel and stick around for more adobe live programming thanks for watching and have a good day bye for now Ciao.